Hi guys, it's me Chaz HD, and welcome to the incident analysis video for the 2019 Monaco Grand Prix and there are plenty of incidents to analyse in this video and we're going to first start off with the contact between Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton right at the end of the Grand Prix of Monaco. The battle between these two was epic, one of the best battles ever at Monaco. Fantastic battle and we are first uh, in all the incidents going to analyse the contact at the new Velt chicane. And why for me, Max Verstappen didn't really deserve the space uh, that he was probably asking for down at the chicane. So at this point you can see Max Verstappen coming out the tunnel is close enough to Hamilton in the slipstream to possibly go for a move. And then you can see here as he hits the brakes, as was happening... All race long, Max Verstappen was a lot better on the brakes because he, his uh, tyres were in much better condition and that really did allow him to brake a lot later than Hamilton into the chicane and also into corners like turn one and corners like that and also the Lowe's hairpin. But then as we get to this point, Max Verstappen definitely has an opportunity to go down the inside of Hamilton but only if the door is wide enough open because at this point Hamilton has not exactly come across to defend his position and I think at this point Verstappen was certain to go for the move to try something to try and uh, win the Monaco Grand Prix but at this point as Hamilton now is starting to turn left to take the corner and kind of starting to defend the reason Verstappen doesn't get the move done is because he doesn't have enough of his car alongside. As you can see here, he barely has any of his car alongside. And then, at this point, where the contact is made, again, he is not fully alongside or even halfway alongside. And for me, was not enough alongside Lewis Hamilton to deserve the space going into the, into the uh, chicane. Lewis Hamilton... Has to try and take the chicane eventually. He can't wait for Max Verstappen to go through. They're racing for the win. So I think Hamilton was fully entitled to turn in. Verstappen though hit Hamilton on the left rear tyre. And then Lewis Hamilton went down the chicane as you can see here. And Hamilton by the way very smart in not continuing to turn in after Verstappen had made contact with him. Because... If he continued to turn in, he might have spun round. So very smart there by Lewis Hamilton. Max Verstappen tried his best um, and credit for him for trying. But I don't think at that, um, at that point in the Grand Prix at the Nouveau Chicane, I don't think Max Verstappen had enough of his car alongside to deserve space with uh, Lewis Hamilton. I know he complained about not having enough space, but... I don't think he deserved it because, again, he didn't have enough of his car through there to deserve that space. But there you go. That is the Max Verstappen-Lewis Hamilton incident. Now, let's get on to Charles Leclerc versus Nico Hülkenberg at the Rascast. And this is, of course, where Charles Leclerc got his puncture. Now, at this point, Leclerc's definitely close enough to have a run on Hülkenberg going into the Ras Cas. And at this point, he goes for the move. He's trying to pull off a similar move to what he did on Roman Grosjean about two laps before this. And, well, he got past Grosjean very nicely, mainly because Grosjean at the last minute let him through. Uh, but Leclerc did nicely get past Grosjean. But at this point, Leclerc is starting to go for the move. But then, as we come to the middle of the corner, Leclerc does have enough of his car alongside, but Hülkenberg is not going to do what Grosjean did and let him through at the last minute because Hülkenberg has more of his car ahead than Grosjean did um, at this point when Grosjean was racing Leclerc at the same, uh, at the same corner. But also... Hülkenberg is entitled to race Leclerc for position and has every right to fight around the outside of Raskas going into the final corner. And then at this point, Hülkenberg, you could argue, is squeezing Leclerc, but 
I don't think he is. I don't think he is. I think Hulkenberg is giving just about enough room for Schall to make it through on the inside. Remember, Hulkenberg also has to go through the corner and he is, again, entitled to fight for that position. So I don't think Hulkenberg here was really doing anything wrong. But the reason Leclerc had his half spin and then his puncture was because, it can, as you can see there, his right rear tyre is now touching the wall and he's slightly as well touched Hulkenberg on his uh, right front tyre, did, um, did Charles Leclerc. And then you can see here, had a half spin and then eventually got a puncture. Um, when it comes to this incident, I think Leclerc definitely is more so to blame. I think in terms of the contact between Leclerc and Hulkenberg, it's a racing incident for me. But in terms of was Leclerc at fault for his damage, absolutely he was because he clipped the wall and deservedly got the damage for being a bit too, I think, ambitious going for that move at Ras Cas. Now, even though I have blamed Leclerc there, you also do have to say Ferrari are a bit to blame for this as well because, again, of what they did to him in qualifying. If he didn't start from P15 and started, say, P4 or P5 where he would have, this would not have happened and Leclerc might have been going for the win. But Ferrari did what they did in qualifying and that is sometimes the consequences of trying to make up for the team's error on the Sunday. And then the final incident we're going to analyze is the Antonio Giovinazzi and Robert Kubica crash at also the RAS cast. Now at this point, Giovinazzi uh, at the safety car restart is trying to go down the inside and has every right to do so. And you can see here at the, uh, this point does look as though he has enough space to go down the inside. And again, at this point, looks as though Giovinazzi could make the move. But again, Kubica, like Hulkenberg with Leclerc, he has to try and make the corner and also he is entitled to fight around the outside going into the final corner, Anthony Nogues. So I think Kubica is in the right for not turning into Giovinazzi, but, you know, trying to turn into the corner. But then at this point, as Kubica pulls slightly ahead, I think he has enough of his car, does Kubica, ahead of Giovinazzi to be able to turn into the corner. And this is why, for me, Antonio Giovinazzi is at fault for this crash because he didn't have enough of his car alongside to deserve really being given space on the exit of Raskas. And then, of course, Kubica got spun round and then the track was blocked. Uh, and for me, again, Antonio definitely at fault. If he had really, you know, charged in there like Leclerc did with Grosjean, then he probably would have got the move done. And if there was contact, I don't think Antonio would have been at fault for that. But he didn't throw it down the inside deep enough at the Raskas to really deserve the space and to really get the move done. And that is what happened. But there you go, guys. That is my incident analysis for the 2019 Monaco Grand Prix. Just want to let you guys know of the content coming up between now and the next Grand Prix in Canada and the practice to watch along in Canada on uh, in next Friday. The next video is going to be a Nicky Lauda tribute video, probably before Friday, maybe Friday at the latest. And then on Saturday, we're going to be doing a recorded podcast as we will be previewing the 2019 Canadian Grand Prix and also... There will be a news video next week and a video about McLaren's IndyCar program failure. And then, of course, we'll get to the Canadian Grand Prix. So that's the content coming up between now and next Friday. So hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. And if you want to be around for that content, then don't forget to subscribe and also hit the like button for that content coming up. And don't forget to comment down below what you thought of this video and also... What do you think of my opinion on these incidents and my analysis of these incidents and also share your opinion of what you think. But guys, until next time, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.